Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is the movie based off the book, based off of the other book, Pride and Prejudice. It's a wave that started a few years ago with these uh, mashups where they would take something like uh, an old Jane Austen novel, Pride and Prejudice, and then mix it with zombies. I don't know if that was the first one or the first one that did well enough that it got attention. And then, of course, there were a whole bunch of other books that uh, came out in that similar vein. There is something oddly intriguing about these mashups. I mean, how can you not be at least a little bit intrigued by something like Android Karenina? When I first heard they were adapting this to a movie, I was pretty excited, because at this time, the zombie craze hadn't been totally oversaturated yet, and I liked the idea of them taking something like this and making a movie out of it. For whatever reason, it languished in production hell, it kept kind of going back and forth, and I believe Nellie Portman was even involved at one point. During that time, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter came out. That movie was... So much fun. The action was awesome. It was bloody. It was a very cool mashup. You're taking uh, Abraham Lincoln and mixing it with vampires. Then they had uh, this whole big Civil War set. And oh, it was just so good. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, definitely go watch it. That one was rated R, and a movie like that should be. However, it didn't do particularly well at the box office, and I think that had a lot to do with what was going on with Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. It felt like more than likely uh, some of the folks involved wanted to keep it R, but of course the studio wanted it to be PG-13 to have the widest appeal possible. And seeing how uh, this one mashup, Abraham Lincoln and Vampires, didn't pan out so well, they started kind of turning their eye, well, we're going to have to do some neutering to this movie movie because you've got a lot of money riding on this. The first trailer came out a few months back and I knew we were in trouble because the trailer I didn't think looked all that bad but then at the very end we had the whole this film has not been rated yet and uh oh that is usually a nice clear sign to me that they haven't been able to get the rating that they wanted. And so then a couple weeks after that, they officially announced, yes, it's going to be PG-13. Yay! A PG-13 zombie movie. That's just wonderful. PG-13 horror movies can work. That's not the issue. It's just that certain films... They can't thrive as PG-13. Uh, there's some cases where the source material is so good, it kind of goes above and beyond, and then the rating doesn't factor too much into it. But in a case like this, I had a feeling we were going to end up with another World War Z. And that's kind of what we got. There was some good, there was some bad, and unfortunately because of the rating, the whole thing was kneecapped. The movie's about five sisters and their families trying to find suitors for them. Uh, while this is going on, it's also a few years into the zombie apocalypse. There's the city that's surrounded by this gigantic wall and uh, a giant moat, and only one bridge can uh, get them in and out. There is a little bit of a couple of love stories in there and uh, a love triangle. However, from what I know of the original novel, that's kind of the whole gist of it. So they at least kept that intact. And the thing was, the love angle, it didn't feel like it overshadowed everything else. It actually kind of flowed along with the movie. It wasn't shoehorned in and it didn't feel like a, uh, a young adult romance thing. In the beginning, they had an interesting little animated sequence that explained everything that went on, how there were different factions of people who went to different locations for training, depending on how much money they had. You had the uh, rich people who went to Japan for training, and uh, then you had uh, the poorer people who went to China to train with like the Shaolin monks. So the five sisters were all trained in the deadly arts, but the problem was PG-13! I felt they pushed it too much. For example, there was a scene where there was a dance and there were a bunch of zombies in there. The five sisters went in, they pulled out their swords and their stabs, and they get to start kicking ass and they're slashing the zombies and there's no blood. They're stabbing the zombies and there's no blood. The one girl smashes the zombie in the mouth, pushing her staff through the back of his skull. No blood. At one point, one of the girls slashed the zombie across the neck. Not only was there no blood, there was no wound. So, uh, it, wow. And then finally, at the very end of the sequence, there's a little of blood on the camera. 
Then you had uh, zombies that were being shot in the head. And their way around that was they had the zombie standing very close to the camera. So the zombie got shot in the head and it exploded into a big poof of dust. Seriously? There was also a scene later on, uh, this is something that really annoys me, this is just a trend with movies in general, where they want to conceal certain things, I guess, for the rating or whatever. So they zoom in really close, and you can kind of tell what's going on, but eh, not really. There was a point where a bunch of zombies were eating brains, and they zoomed in very close, and they did a couple of quick cuts, maybe five or six, just, you know, zombies eating brains, and then cut away and went back and it's like why even bother i just i my mind can't comprehend the point of having a pg-13 zombie film especially in the day and age with something like the walking dead or it's not a zombie show but the strain you've got two television shows that are bloodier than what's in theaters I did like uh, something that the trailers didn't show was that there was actually a fair amount of humor in the movie. It wasn't just all serious. Like the trailer made it look dead serious and grim dark. And there was a pretty good amount of humor in this. I did enjoy that very much. I think that was uh, from what I've gathered from the people I know who have read the book, uh, that it is kind of a very tongue in cheek thing. And how could you not? If you're going to do something like take Pride and Prejudice and add zombies, the least you could do is throw in a nice sense of humor. I like the cast. I thought uh, Lily James did good as uh, Elizabeth Bennett. Charles Dance was her father. He's great. Unfortunately, he wasn't in it for very much. Lena Headey was in this. I had no idea. She had a small but fairly important role in the movie. And a large part of the comedic relief was Matt Smith. He was just this really awkward suitor, and uh, a lot of jokes were made at his expense. So, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I can't recommend this one for a couple of reasons. The first reason being that it just felt too neutered. I have a feeling that there is an R-rated or unrated cut looming, but it's all uh, CGI blood splatters inserted back in. There was too many times where they would stab and pull away, and normally there'd be the little zombie blood burst, and in this they'd stab and pull the knife away, nothing. Oh, and there were plenty of times where they're standing around brandishing their weapons after they just killed a bunch of zombies, and the swords and knives and everything did not have a hint of blood on them. So as I was saying, I can't recommend going to see this theatrically. If you're intrigued by the idea, and maybe if they release an unrated cut when it comes on DVD, give it a rent. The production design was good, the acting was good, the humor was good, but it just came up lacking. And not just because of the violence. There was something missing. I can't quite put my finger on it, but when it got to about the halfway point, I kind of wanted it to be over. I was enjoying it, but it just felt like there was some stuff that was dragging on, and I don't know, it wasn't particularly as exciting as I thought it could have been. So it's not a complete waste of time, but not something you should see in theaters. Although I have to admit, I do have my fingers crossed for Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters.